So this program has emanated from the, the, the uh, community program's office. The truth, and in all the stories that already are there, our truths are seeds in which the launch is forward. That's what the beloved community initiative is all about. It's based on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s advocacy for a beloved community. And we've embodied it here since 2015 at UCLA. Wow. Based on Dr. King's visit and his call for action for students. It takes students into the community and brings the community to the campus. We're here tonight at the UCLA Athletic Hall of Fame for the Los Angeles screening of Called Up the Emmett Ashford Story, which is going to be a wonderful event tonight for all that to come out to enjoy this wonderful historical baseball documentary about Major League Baseball's first African-American umpire who broke into the Major Leagues in 1966. We're celebrating today, the 15th of April, the 75th anniversary of Jackie's getting in the major league. This is, to me, an LA story. This is an African-American LA story that needs to be told. And it's a story about success, and it's a story about disrespect. And I think people have to understand, as an African-American, how much disrespect you get even when you have success. The executive producer of Called Up, Raymond Bell, is an alumnus here at UCLA, and this is a very, very special evening for both the two of us because Raymond has worked diligently with the kind folks here at UCLA. Called Up is one of the programs being sponsored by the Bluff Community Initiative doing the Beloved Community Awareness Week here at UCLA. And we were amazed as we started to look and see uh, information, newspaper articles and things of that nature. It kind of blew us away. It blew us away and, and that no one had done a story or a movie about this man. You just saw some of the incredible information that we gave you in this film. We lost 10 cast members in this film and by us capturing their stories in relation to Emmett Ashford make this documentary film that much more special to both Ray and myself and also for the families of those who we lost. We have two esteemed people on our panel that had experiences with Emmett Ashford and they have to be two boys uh, which I'm happy about but, but uh, both Hall of Famers I like each one to kind of tell a story about their personal experience with Emmett Ashford to share that. And first up would be Coach Gary Adams. Our leadoff man hit a single, and he was the fastest guy on our team. So I gave him a steal sign. I gave him a steal sign. He took off running. Catcher made a perfect throw to second, threw him out. And my player didn't agree with Emmett at all. So he uh, he started hollering, and I, I got to get out there before he throws out my player, you know. And uh, so I, I ran out there, and I told him, hey, and I, uh, Mr. Ashford, you know, I know you were a lot closer to the call than I was, but it looked to me like he was safe. And uh, he looked at me, well, coach, you know, I call him as I see him, not as you, as you see him. 1971, I played freshman ball here uh, at, at UCLA, and so I was playing varsity. Uh, my second year was in 71 when, when, when Emmett was umpiring in college, uh, college baseball games. And I just happened to be the leadoff hitter on our team. This is the first time I'd ever been in a game that Emmett was umpiring. And of course, I had the dubious distinction of being called out on strikes in my first at bat with him. And, uh, you know, we played over at uh, Sawtell Field, which is now Jackie Robinson Stadium. And when he called me out, everyone here at UCLA could probably hear him uh, make that call. So maybe later in the season, 
We're at another game, and I go up to bat, and I said, uh, you're not going to ring me up today, are you? <laughs> and he said, um, I'll tell you this, girl. He goes, if it's two strikes and it's close, you better swing. <laughs> One of the special guests here tonight for, for our screening of the Called Up documentary is none other than Bernard and Shirley Kinsey who are the curators of the Kinsey Black History Exhibit. And their exhibit is one of the largest Black History exhibits of art, artifacts, and just a very wonderful collection of our Black history. And they're really gonna work to really show the connection between the work that they do as curators and preservers of our Black history and how our story about Emmett Ashford works in preserving documentary black history. To Doug and to Ray, thank you so much for inviting us. Um, there, there's a, there's a, there's a, a saying, what gets us in trouble is not what we know, is what we think we know that just ain't so. <laughs> and almost everything about what we do in America as black people just ain't so. And this film really speaks to that. I grew up in West Palm Beach, Florida, in the Grapefruit League. My dad used to take me to see uh, Hank Aaron and Jackie Robinson. Uh, and I'm older than I look, okay, so let's <laughs> <laughs> right. And um, so I, I, I knew of your father. And when we talked yesterday, I just immediately wanted to come. I do want to say to each of you all, I really, really enjoyed uh, bringing this person to life. We have an exhibition at SoFi Stadium right now. We have 100,000 square feet in SoFi Stadium uh, through Juneteenth, okay? We were there for Super Bowl, believe it or not, and our our documents start in 1595. Yes, there were black people in America before Jamestown. We, and they weren't enslaved. That's something else, okay? And also we have paintings that start in 1865. During the Civil War, there were black people painting for a living in these United States. So the Kinsey Collection, Shirley and I have been married 55 years. We moved to California in 1967, 18 months after the, the watch ride. So we have been intimately involved with LA for 55 years. But what we really have been working on is telling these remarkable stories of accomplishment and achievement of African Americans in building this country before it was recognized in Jamestown. That's what the Kinsey Collection has done. But this is what you all have done is what we have to do more of, is tell our stories about our heroes because they're living literally in plain sight. I know our ancestors are very proud of him and we want you to know that we're very proud of him also. This gives our kids, I always say, with our kids doing Black History Month, they only get three or four people to talk about, or find out about. I don't care what grade you're in, that's all you get. So our kids grow up thinking that's all there is. Nobody else did anything. Your kids, white kids, all kids grew up here in Black History Month, these same three people, and they think nobody else did anything. Now we have more names to add to that list, and the day gives us a chance to do that. Thank you so much for sharing. Shirley tells me one thing. They love our rhythm, but they don't like our blues. <laughs> okay? They love our rhythm, but they don't like our blues. And until they learn our blues and love it, we're never gonna have the equality we need. And being black in this country is a special predicament, okay? It's like having a second job, okay? Ooh, preach. And I have wealth, okay? And it's the same problem. I don't get stopped as much because I got gray hair. But everything else is the same. So what I'm asking you all to do is double down on your agency, okay? And use Emmett Ashford as your model for working hard there's a saying, the road to success is under construction and the road to failure is a four-lane highway. Watch yourself, okay? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. What we're doing with this film, and uh, while we're here at UCLA as well, 
is to develop to develop an academic curriculum. And we think this 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 film is, is noteworthy to uh, to kids and young adults to understand about diversity, equity, and inclusion, and have an individual like Emmett Ashford be that be that barometer, be that that that, that vehicle, be that compass to direct kids to understand. Everything doesn't happen in an instant. And then we have people that have sacrificed, that have dreamed of dreams uh, despite the obstacles, and that his, 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 his journey matters. And this is what we want as far as why we're here in UCLA as well. This is my alma mater. And so this is why we're here too. And it, it is key that we have an academia person involved in this film to bring the, the, the uh, South Central to life, to tell the story about where Emmett came from and the impact that that area had on him and others to come out of that, that great area. He came from a great high school. You're talking about somebody that if he were living today would just be a, a motivating force for everyone. And the stuff that he had to endure and the way he took it was absolutely a wonderful way in which he did it. You yeah, know, wonderful. So, LA is my home, okay? And I understand LA in a way that a majority of folks do not understand LA. Thinking about Emmett as someone who was homegrown, worked in the post office, did all the kind of middle class things that African Americans did, and said, wait a minute, I don't want to spend 25 years in the post office, I want to be a baseball umpire, okay? And that was a big deal. You got to sit down and with youngsters, you got to listen to the old people. You just got to just sit there and just keep your mouth shut and you'll learn something, okay? And they will tell you stories. Uh, and speaking of elder, I have, to, I have to acknowledge we have a gentleman here that's 95 years old that knew him in Ashford. I wanted to ask, how many of you people have ever went to a restaurant in the South and been told that you have to go out back and eat? I, I was just wondering how many people have gone through being, you know, yeah. that is the most degraded th thing in the world. So I know what Emmett Ashford went through. We used to talk all the time. And maybe it might change, but if our younger generation don't listen, it's gonna be hard. This has just been such a remarkable experience for me. I'm a graduate student researcher here at UCLA and I do very similar work. I'm researching Arthur Ashe as we're doing an oral history project. And so the idea that I, I believe Mr. Kinsey was saying earlier that there are so many stories that are just unknown and they're, they're right in front of us, right? And so I think just uh, that resonates with me so strongly because we do have that, that you know, when we come around Black History Month, we, the stories come out and we're reminded of them, you know. Um, and the work I'm doing, I'm just saying, you know, there are so many instances that we, we have to find a way to be able to keep in people's memory, keep in people's everyday life. And so I'm wondering if you can speak a little bit more to what we, um, as people that are interested in preserving history and, and, and teaching people about the value of history, what can we do to, to make sure that people remember these stories? I mean, you mentioned some of uh, what you're trying to do with, with building curriculum and things like that, but like, where, where do we go from here? I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, right? We live in an age of technology where everybody's a filmmaker. Am I correct? Everybody's a filmmaker. Everybody got a cell phone, a little DSLR camera, whatever. They can record their family's history. And for me, uh, history has always started with your family first, and then you move outward. So, you know, I always try to encourage young people to take their cell phone and leave them TikTok videos alone for you know a day or a couple of weeks. But really put that put that put that camera in front of your grandmother, your great grandmother, and capture your family's history through the stories because if you don't take a little time and get your family's history together, 
it, 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 once they pass away, it's lost forever. And you won't have anything to share with generations that come from behind you. Stories like these inspire young people, not in, just in education, but in, in achieving greatness. Like, if, if he could do it, I have to do at least something. I gotta, I gotta be him, or I have the opportunity to, to, to rise higher. I learned a lot about Jackie Robinson. I've done a project on him. And I feel like in a lot of schools, I've learned a lot of things that's taught is, you know, the first time someone did this and acts as if once that happened, everything like got better resolved. So I think it's really important just to show that just because Jackie Robinson was the first black player, that there's so many other barriers. Um, and just that, Emma Ashford, like his amazing story, like what it takes to be an umpire, because umpires don't stand out the way a player does. Like the skill that Jackie Robinson had was undeniable. Um, and it's a lot harder to do that as an umpire. But like he did with um, in the love he had for the game and the way he showed that. Um, so I think it's an amazing story and really important to show um, like his perseverance and the struggles that so many people at that time have gone through and like throughout history are going. Hearing firsthand accounts and like from primary sources of you know the legacy that these people leave behind, like that transcends just the legacy of your players. Because at the end of the day, like yeah, people go to the games, they watch the players, but like the games don't happen without all these other people that are there. And I think telling you know the story of Emmett Ashford in this way, and you know portraying not only the legacy of the players but also the legacy of these people that have built the game further, um, you know it's, it's just. It's, it's amazing to hear. It's something that's not talked about enough. Um, and I know I learned a lot watching it and, and I'm definitely you know, happy and, and proud that I'm, I'm here now. When I was playing ball for San Diego State, that's where I first ran across Emmett and he was umpiring behind the plate at USC. He umpired the semi-pro leagues when during the winter when they all play, and then you know he's he's a character. He's had you know he's got all emotions and stuff like that, and and not just you're out, but he ho oh, 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 boom you're out and something like that. You know, I live about three short blocks from Wrigley Field, which was the home uh, home baseball field for the Los Angeles Angels and Triple A baseball, the Pacific. Coast League. Wrigley Field was located just west of Central, right in the middle of the black community. One of the interesting things about the Wrigley Field, where I hung out so much, was that I could see the uh, Negro League baseball teams play there. I worked those exhibition games during the winter over the old Wrigley Field. So they bounced from all over Southern California, and I, I was umpire. And Bob Feller used to bring out an all-star team, and he played Jackie Robinson. And it was right here in our, in our neighborhood. My grandfather would tell this story about Satchel Paige, and uh, I mean, it was, it was almost unbelievable. There was showmanship in the Negro League. I saw Josh Gibson and the Homestead Grays, saw Satchel Paige play. I remember the first baseman wouldn't just catch the ball, he'd sweep it and whoop it around and whip it around. And Emmett Asher fit in perfectly as an umpire. Emmett's behavior wasn't special for the Negro Leagues. There was a lot of folks who, were, who, who had really flamboyant, show, showy behaviors. But Emmett was also good at umpiring. You read about the old Negro League players, they, they traveled around the same circuit with the jazz bands. The African-American ball players really loved jazz music. So there was a real interaction and exchange uh, between the musicians and the ball players. When you came to Los Angeles, you don't miss the opportunity to visit places like the Mimo, the Alabama. And the Club Alabama was top flight music and dance, the best. And so um, my mother and father danced, and they were a member of the Rug Cutters Club. And in fact, his dancing was characterized by a lot of fancy footwork and gestures. And I guess some of that carried on to the field of the hand, hand gestures and that type thing. Uh, my name is Elias Gidry. I'm currently on the football team now. 
And this story was just really inspirational because uh, something Mr. Ashford did, uh, he brought black people up through sports. And that's something I try to do um, with doing work on campus and doing work for athletes and just trying to improve things and make things better for black athletes moving forward and black people in general, you know. So it's just a really inspirational story. I learned about a new hero and I'm gonna tell my teammates so people all know about the story and keep passing it on. That's something I appreciate learning from the older generation, just learning about heroes, learning about legends that from, were from y'all's time and passing, passing these stories down so that we, the next generation, can do great things as they did. So thank you all for your stories. Thank you all for everything you did for this project and I uh, appreciate it. This program came from a student base, the Community Programs Office. When I was a student at UCLA and played football here, it was the Community Programs Office that saved me, mm, okay? It was through that office that I connected with the Los Angeles community. Not the campus, we're on the west side. Yeah. I didn't know nobody in LA. The Community Programs Office took students all over LA, out to the community. Crenshaw, I didn't know nothing about Crenshaw, the community programs office. I didn't know that during that time there was a major challenge for us in the black community, emergence of gangs. They took me to gang centers to work with gang members as a student athlete. It's amazing the stories, the experiences. You talk about your elders, you talk about those who have passed before us. We have to listen to the stories because the stories will show us the path forward and calls up. This is a story that has, has seminal value to our history going forward. I want you to know that this, this was a special treat tonight for me and Ray so that everybody can see the uncut, you know, the uncut version.